up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the completely redesigned 2021 hyundai elantra courtesy of jack g on volvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below wanted to check this one out of course because it's been completely redesigned for 2021 and actually this is the seventh generation elantra now first the launcher began back in 1990 believe it or not so it's been around for a while now and for 2021 it is now longer lower and wider which makes for a lot more aggressive styling a lot better look to it in my personal opinion at least 97 percent of it is made in korea it's true kdm and of course you have the best warranty being five year 60 000 mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 000 miles on the powertrain and you actually get three years of complimentary maintenance as well that means not having to pay for oil changes or tire rotations things like that for three years that's definitely nice I personally own two Hyundais right now and I absolutely love both of them so far. So having said that, you can imagine this is going to be a super in-depth review of the Elantra. So what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so to start, there are a few different trim levels, of course, for the Hyundai Elantra. First one being the SE starting at $19,650, SEL for $20,900, and the Limited starting at $25,450. Now we do have the SEL trim level today but i also wanted to mention to you guys there is also going to be a hybrid configuration a sport and an n model as well to the elantra although hyundai doesn't yet have pricing on them but i still did want to mention that just in case you wanted to hold out for one of those trims but regardless of the trim levels that are currently available power plant on this one right now is going to be the same powering the 2021 elantra is going to be a two liter direct injected inline four cylinder engine putting out 147 horsepower at 6200 rpm 132 pound-feet of torque available at 4500 rpm power sent to the front wheels through an IVT essentially Hyundai's continuously variable transmission there and MPG numbers are going to come in at 33 in the city 43 on the highway for the SE 31 city 41 highway for the SEL and limited trim levels of course taking regular unleaded fuel or 87 octane whatever you want to call it but so then before we do any kind of fun acceleration test in the new Elantra I did want to mention there are a few different drive modes available that actually come standard on this one including normal sport and smart that drive mode button is located just to the left of the p kind of in front of the shifter there and it will adjust things like the shift points throttle response and the steering sensitivity so let me go ahead and put it in sport it did immediately downshift so it is going to hold the rpms in a much higher level and dang that is a much weightier steering feel i absolutely love the weight of the steering when you put it in that sport driving mode but having mentioned all that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straight away here and let's see how quickly we can get this new 2021 hyundai elantra here up to speed all right a little bit of a rolling start but let's go mm. it's not bad i feel like the faster you go the faster it starts to accelerate like as it gets higher up in the rpm range but Eh, it's okay it's definitely not the quickest thing in the world but shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway but having said that i cannot wait until there is an elantra n that is going to be so ridiculously quick i'm going to very much look forward to reviewing that one but Having said that, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11-inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10-inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes in the Elantra, definitely on point there. It does have a little bit softer of a feel, but it's not bad. Certainly no issues with the braking when it comes to the new Elantra here. Touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back torsion beam rear axle this is something where i kind of wish they would have done an independent rear suspension as well but i have a feeling maybe the n-line version of this car or the elantra n will definitely be having that independent rear suspension for a little better handling there but having said that as far as the ride quality goes it is excellent absolutely no issues there whatsoever i would even say it is better than both the corolla the civic and the mazda 3 and that is something that i noticed on the 2020 elantra as well it is one of the best ride quality if not the best in its class at least when it comes to ride quality as far as steering feel goes Mazda 3 has definitely got a beat there but it's not bad I will say when you put it in that sport driving mode it is very noticeably heavier has a heavier weight to it so it instantly points you in the direction that you want to go 
I would even say it has a heavier weight to it in sport mode than my Sonata in sport mode. So definitely a very nice feel to this steering, at least when it is in that sport mode. As far as cabin noise goes, it's all right. It's not bad. It's pretty much as expected. You get a little bit of wind noise at higher speeds, but really other than that, it's perfectly fine. It's nothing that's going to annoy me or anything like that. Touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Typically with sedans, you aren't going to have any issues there anyways. But that about rounds up the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this completely redesigned 2021 Hyundai Elantra. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Hyundai Elantra finished in intense blue. In case anybody was curious about the exterior color name, and I do apologize for the leaf crumbling. There are a lot of leaves this time of year here in Pennsylvania. But anyways, let me go ahead and make my way to the proportions of this thing first, because like I mentioned to you guys at the beginning of the video, it has changed from the previous generation. Length actually increases by 2.2 inches. Width has increased by an inch, and it is 0.8 inches lower than the previous generation. So it's now longer and wider than both the Civic and the Corolla. So that does make for a much more aggressive look. And that's definitely a good thing in my opinion. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the front of the Elantra here. And so starting up front, the hood is going to taper down quite a bit as compared to the previous Elantra. It's a new larger Sonata style front grille that actually looks really good in my opinion. Black front grille will come with the SE and SEL. You will actually get a dark chrome front grille for the Limited. It is going to be optional on the SEL, however, if you wanted it. To the sides, projector style headlights do come with the SE and SEL trim levels like you were looking at right now. They do actually also get the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, they will turn on automatically for you there. LED daytime running lights also coming standard, but if you were to go with the limited trim level, you actually get LED headlights. So if you want a little better illumination at night, go with that limited trim level. It's going to be there for you. And so overall, I feel like the Hyundai logo has gotten a little bit larger up there as well. And I like how the hood crease is kind of tapered down, giving all the attention to that Hyundai logo in the front overall definitely a very nice look very aggressive look to the front end especially with this new proportions but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the Elantra here and so I have crawled back in the woods here for you guys so you can better see the silhouette of the side of the Elantra here chrome window surrounds are going to come with a limited trim level only otherwise you are going to get those matte black window surrounds that you're currently looking at right now and I do like the blue and the black look I will say that z-shaped design to the side doors I wanted to show that to you guys because that is definitely a very unique look look to it. I don't think any other vehicles are doing that Z-shaped design creases on the side of the vehicles right now, but the Elantra. I kind of like it. It's definitely different. I always like different, so looks good to me. Body colored door handles are going to come standard on all trim levels, of course. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors also coming standard, and if you were to go with the limited trim level, you will get heated side mirrors with integrated turret signals as well. And by the way, that configuration is optional on the SEL that we have today, if you wanted it. And I do like the fastback style silhouette to this one it kind of tapers down ever so gradually in the back so it's a cool look to it then taking a look down at the wheel setup 15 inch alloy wheels will come standard with the se i like this just because typically bottom trim levels of other compact cars will give you steel wheels with covers or hubcaps but on the SE of the Elantra, you actually get alloy wheels. So that's a big win for the bottom trim level, at least. 16-inch alloys, like you're looking at right now, will come on the SEL. And lastly, the Limited is going to give you 17-inch alloys, which, by the way, of course, are optional on either of those other trim levels if you wanted to go that route. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Elantra here. It's so, but now, since we are around back, I love this back. I love the back of the Elantra. It looks so good. Shark fin antenna up top. You kind of have an integrated rear spoiler. I think that's why I like it. It looks so darn aggressive just because of the angles of the back end of the Elantra here. Anyways, LED taillights are going to come standard on the Limited. It is going to be optional on the SEL that we have today. As far as that taillight design goes, I like how it's all tied together from side to side, just like the Sonata once again. Elantra lettering is going to be spelled out horizontally. I always like that because it makes for a more high-end look in my opinion. And of course, below it all, there is a single exhaust outlet. However, it is tucked away on the Elantra, so not sure how I feel about that. I would have preferred it being expensive. Exposed, but either way, I believe you guys do know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. And 
So, but now since we are around back of the Elantra, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are a couple different ways to go about doing it. In previous generations, that button was hidden within the Hyundai logo itself. Now, it is still hidden, but it is no longer within that Hyundai logo. It's actually a black button camouflage just below the Hyundai logo. So that is one way to go ahead and open it up. There's also a button on the key fob itself if you wanted to go that route. And there is also a button on the floor of the driver's side. So that is yet another way to go ahead and open that one up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.2 cubic feet. So for a little comparison here, when it comes to the Civic, that comes in at 15.1, so a little bit more with the Civic. When it comes to the Corolla, 13.1 cubic feet, so a little bit less with the Corolla. So essentially, the Elantra is right in the middle of those two when it comes to cargo space. But either way, those rear seats do fold down. There is a 60-40 split, providing a ton of extra space there if you needed it. And so then making our way to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 38 inches, which of course is improved from the previous generation thanks to its longer size for the 2021 Elantra. So when comparing that to the Civic and Corolla, Civic comes in at 37.4 inches, Corolla comes in at 34.8 inches. So decent amount with the Civic, not as much definitely with the Corolla, but overall the Elantra will give you the most rear legroom when comparing those two at least. So do want to mention that. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders. It's going to come standard on the Limited. It is going to be optional on the SEL, though of course we don't have that option here today. Front passenger seat back Mac pocket coming with the Limited trim level, again optional on the SEL. And I gotta say on our SEL trim level that we have here today, I wouldn't have minded seeing some maybe USB charging port for the rear passengers back there as well but nonetheless more than enough legroom and that is really where the Elantra is going to shine compared to the competition at least but then make your way to the front seats cloth seating coming with the SE and SEL leather seating coming with the limited you will find a six-way manually adjustable driver's seat with the SE and SEL that we have today power driver's seat with lumbar support is going to come with the limited trim level only there is a four-way manually adjustable passenger seat for all trim levels actually you will get heated front seats with the limited and it is going to be optional on the sel but having said all of that i will say seating is actually plenty comfortable even without the lumbar support in the elantra here i like the side bolsters as well definitely held me in place quite nicely it's going to obviously be better once the end comes out or the end line comes out of the elantra but still plenty comfortable seats i will say that and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping for all trim levels it will come leather wrapped if you were to go with the limited that leather wrapped steering wheel is going to be optional on the SEL. Having said that, I do love the 10 and 2 grips of the new Elantra here. They are much thicker grips than they were previously, so I do appreciate that little better feeling of being in control there. Then make our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. Please ignore the sticker, but you do have your Hyundai logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch, and the center hold button with the circle in the middle there, that is actually going to be your remote start, which is going to come standard on the SEL and limited trim levels. And there is of course a push button start along with that for those two trim levels as well. And by the way, the push button start is in a unique design located just below the center air vents there. And it's kind of propped up sitting on its own little shelf, I guess you could say, but it is a pretty cool design. Another unique design element to the Elantra. And we'll get more into that in a little bit here. But I also wanted to mention there is a digital key that is going to come on the limited trim level and it's going to be optional on the SEL. I wanted to mention that because if you have a compatible smartphone, essentially all you need to to do is download the Hyundai digital key app and then you never have to take your keys with you from that point forward because you just hold your phone up to the door and then there's a certain place in front of the shifter that you put your phone in order to start the vehicle so that's a pretty cool feature if you don't want the keys in your pocket all the time so it's going to be there for you as well but let me now touch on the gauges because again it's going to differ amongst the trim levels there is going to be a 4.2 inch digital gauge display for the se and sel that's actually located all the way to the right tachometers on your left speedometer is front and center i do like the colors that they used definitely a nice sporty design to this one so i am actually a fan although it's not the better gauge setup because the better gauge setup is actually going to be a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster coming with the limited, which is optional once again on the SEL, but that is going to be completely customizable. And I'll insert a picture on this video right now of it, but it looks a lot like the digital gauge cluster that I've reviewed in Mercedes Benz vehicles. So that is a pretty cool setup. I will say that and again, it's customizable. So that's always a good thing too. But now let's make our way to overall interior quality because there's a 
lot of hits and misses on this one. Power sunroof coming with the limited. It is optional on the SEL. It's always nice. Dual zone climate control coming standard on the SEL. That's pretty nice for the price point, and we'll say that. Also standard on the limited, of course, that both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures. Wireless phone charger coming with the limited. It's optional on the SEL. You do have customizable ambient interior lighting with plenty of different color options, only with the limited trim level. So that is going to look pretty amazing at night as well as definitely something I would get if I were to get the Elantra. So that is going to be there for you as well. Another thing I really like about the Elantra is they didn't overlook the stalks coming off of the steering wheel here for like your lights and your windshield wipers. There's a nice unique feel to them at the very end, just like in the Sonata. So makes for a little more upscale feel rather than just a basic plastic. It's a nice, smooth, glossy finish. So I do like that. Just in front of the shifter, you're gonna have two USB charging ports, 12 volt power outlet, and a little bit of storage there as well. Although wouldn't have minded if that little bit of storage had a rubberized bottom. So things are a little less inclined to slide around there. Just behind the shifter, you have two Two cup holders and of course within the center armrest a decent amount of storage there as well one of the design elements i like about this new sonata is the center air vent that ties together both sides of the vehicle there it's nice sleek design so i do like that i will say that also probably my favorite aspect about the interior design of this one the corvette like grab handle that separates the driver and passenger side here you guys probably seen the interior of the new corvette also has one of these and the reason i like it is because it makes it more driver centric it kind of pulls everything towards the driver everything is angled slightly towards the driver like a sports car would have like the nissan gtr actually as well i knew they do that too so Definitely a very driver-centric interior design, so I do like that. Having said that, a little bit of room for improvement here. There are a lot of hard plastics, like just around the cup holders, around the shifter as well. Also, the speaker covers here, they are finished in plastic too. Wouldn't have minded if they were aluminum. I know it'd probably be a little more expensive, but they aren't that big of speaker covers. I don't think it would be too expensive, but I know Genesis does that with their speakers, their Lexicon sound system specifically. So I wouldn't have minded a little better feel to those speakers there. But overall, having said that, the design itself is wonderful on the interior of the Elan mantra some of the finishes not so much with the hard plastics ultimately now let's make our way though to the tech display eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the se and sel you will get a ten and a quarter inch color touchscreen display however if you were to go with the limited it's a little bit of difference there but either way you still get bluetooth and audio streaming regardless of which setup that you go with and you still get android auto and apple carplay although it is going to differ probably backwards than what you would think here. For the limited trim, you still have to hook your phone up to the Elantra via USB cable. However, with the SE and SEL trims, it is actually wireless. Android Auto Apple CarPlay, which is 100% better because then you don't have the dangling wires everywhere. I don't know why I did it that way. Maybe it has something to do with the 10 and a quarter inch screen that the Limited comes with. But either way, wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay is amazing. I love that. Also, of course, you can check out your driving statistics up there as well and your radio information as expected. And when it comes to the sound systems, you will get six speakers with the SE and SEL. You will get an eight speaker Bose sound system if you were to go with the Limited. So, Having said that, you guys know we do have the six speaker sound system then therefore, so let's go ahead and turn on the radio seat we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one. I've always been the one to say the first all right, so I will say clarity is 100% on point for a six speaker sound system at least, but Bass could have been a little bit more, not a whole lot of bass with the six speakers, but the clarity, you can definitely feel it from a good bit of direction. So I actually like the clarity for six speakers. I will say that, not the best. Both sound system is obviously gonna be better, but it's not bad for a six speaker sound system. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the Elantra in reverse, of course, you will find a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start front side, side curtain airbags, of course, do come standard but also driver's knee airbag up front as well it doesn't always come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks back there also tire pressure monitoring system that's all pretty basic stuff at this point but 
Hyundai really kills it with the safety. Here's why every single trim level is going to get a ton of advanced safety features, including forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, lane keep assist, which is amazing on the Hyundai brand in general. They do that a lot better than other manufacturers that I drive. Lane following assist, driver attention warning system, high beam assist, and safe exit warning as well. So that is a ton that comes standard on every single trim level. You got to love that. If you were to go with a limited, you're going to get some additional stuff as well, including adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which is another very good system on Hyundai. I will say that rear parking sensors, reverse parking collision avoidance assist and highway drive assist as well, which is Hyundai's automated driving on the highway at least. So that is a pretty cool thing there as well. But overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Elantra, it's longer, lower and wider which makes it look so much more aggressive and a much better look to it than the previous generation. Gotta love that. Ride quality is absolutely amazing when comparing it to the other vehicles in its class. So it definitely soaks up the road imperfections very, very well. And that goes the same for the previous generation as well. So you gotta love that. More rear legroom than the Civic and Corolla. So because of its longer length, you do have a good bit more space back there if you needed it. Also, I love the fact that it has an available digital gauge cluster, an available 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen and digital key available as well. These are all things that the Civic and Corolla really don't have quite yet. Especially that digital key is such a cool feature. If you're a techie, you're definitely gonna love that one. America's best warranty for ultimate peace of mind. If you drive less than 10,000 miles a year, essentially you're warrantied for 10 years when it comes to the engine and transmission, things like that. So that is pretty crazy too. But even if you look in a Consumer Reports magazine, you will see that the Elantra has above average reliability anyway. So either way, you're good to go. Three years free maintenance also comes standard with this one so it's going to save you some money there too definitely a very nice steering feel as well when you put it in that sport drive mode a lot of vehicles don't give you that extra heavy feel to it when you do that but i do like that the elantra gives you a nice feel to it within within its sport driving mode at least so that is about it for this one you guys let me know what you guys think of the new elantra specifically the styling i want to see if you guys like the styling or not but put it in the comments section below feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you want to see what's coming next on the channel be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold